Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar run for the UKV, have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days as it is going unsettled once again with most days this upcoming week having periods of heavy rain in many areas. The one positive though is temperatures will be on the up as we see the winds veer back to a west to southwesterly instead of an easterly like we've seen recently. The upper air temperatures and the surface temperatures are going to be increasing quite substantially. We could even get into the low to mid teens come the middle part of the week. But uh, in my opinion, if it's 15 degrees and pouring down, I'd much prefer it to be seven or eight degrees with sunshine. The longer range is still looking very interesting as we have alluded to over the past couple of days and generally over the past few weeks we have seen sudden stratospheric warming taking place very weak polar vortex with a reversal in the zone of weak winds and we were expecting to see some sort of response and we've continued to see flirtation with that GFS run today really going a bit OTT with a blocking signal again don't know if it will happen or not, but definitely one of the first sort of major runs we've seen in the last few days, in the last week or so, that has returned proper wintry weather as we head into early spring. The other runs, GM and Eastern Blue, both suggest the risk of some blocking further northwards, but nowhere near as over the top as the GFS goes. Um, and of course, GFS would, as I said, probably bring in snow widespread frosts and generally pretty cold conditions and of course we'll have a look at that in the second half of the video so do remember if you enjoy my videos which do like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the links in the description now if you start on the live radar as expected we've got lots of rain around has actually pushed further northwards and eastwards earlier than initially anticipated and you can see already parts of scotland and northeast england are seeing lots of heavy rain moving in the best areas are actually across parts of wales and southwest England, but here we saw rain yesterday. So I saw the worst conditions yesterday, but seeing better conditions today. Now this wind, uh, this rain sorry, is coming straight in from the southeast. You can see plenty of precipitation still across parts of Europe. So I am expecting this rain to continue through the rest of today. You can see it's not a massive wall of rain. There are breaks in it, so it's not going to be complete washout conditions, but going to be very much on and off rain for the foreseeable future. Now, if you put on the temperatures, you'll be able to see that it is a lot milder in the southwest. So that's where the wind is starting to change to a west to southwesterly. But further north and eastward, still cool. And generally under the precipitation across much of England and Wales, you see blues mixing in with yellows, indicating temperatures struggling to get much above the mid to high single digits. So pretty chilly and pretty miserable out there through the rest of today. Now, if you do go over to the latest UKV, you'll be able to see all that rain moving through at the moment, spreading slowly northwards and eventually dissipating away through this evening. You can see it is actually quite a bit more widespread than the UKV has anticipated, so a little bit uh, more rain there than we'd expected. But as you can see, it continues through the evening. As we head into Monday, you can see slightly dry conditions further eastwards and southwards, but rain will move back in for the early to middle parts of the week. Now, yesterday, we did think potentially high pressure could hold on, but the UKV has pushed that high pressure away today. So very subtle differences in the pressure is meaning now we are expecting rain to return widely back into Tuesday. Now, as Tuesday moves in, you can see heavy rain pushing back in for the morning and continuing to push northwards and eastwards through the afternoon into the evening. Pretty miserable conditions and the same follows into Wednesday. Some areas could stay drier, but still plenty of cloud around and some outbreaks of rain. And that continues into Thursday with more precipitation moving in. So you can see it's not a constant barrage of rain. We're not going to be seeing just walls and walls of rain moving in. But we are going to see lots of areas of precipitation. Some areas we'll see you could 12 to 24 hours of very little, but other areas could see pretty persistent rain at times. So not looking good over the coming days. 
I said, returning us back to very uncertain conditions. But I must say the one positive is it's going to be turning milder. And you see this afternoon temperatures struggling around the mid to high single digits for many areas under that heaviest uh, under the heaviest rain, further south and westwards, maybe getting to 10 to 12 degrees. As we head into Monday, though, temperatures still struggling as the air, to, uh, air is slowly starting to warm up. And you can see that as we head into Tuesday, into the southwest and south in general. Look at that double digits, quite widey, but still cooler further northwards and eastwards. And then into Wednesday, again, look at that, 13 or 14 degrees across many parts of England. There, as we do see a milder sector push in. So yes, turning milder, but very unsettled still. And the same could be said into Thursday, where we could even see a 15 degree. And across parts of northern France, high teens, 16, 17, maybe even 18. But of course... The milder the air mass, the more humid and warm the air is, we are going to be seeing more rain associated with that. Is so it going to increase the temperature contrast between the cold air and the mild air, increasing the strength of these weather fronts pushing in. And into Friday, you can see not getting much below double digits overnight. So again, will be a pretty mild day on Friday as well. But as I said, the longer range is still all up for grabs. And as we see in the latest GFS, the six o'clock run, it is showing winter returning. Now, after you run through this, you can see westy wind this week, nothing out of the ordinary. But as we head towards day 10 and beyond, we see a break of pressure higher pressure building up towards Greenland and starting to plunge north or northeasterly winds in. Now at this stage, I wouldn't say we are absolutely in the freezer, but look at the air heading our way. Very cold pool of air heading into northern Europe and heading towards the UK. Massive block up towards Greenland and northeast Canada. And you see this from the temperature deviation. Very warm air heading into the Arctic, very cold air exiting out of the Arctic into Europe there. See that on the potential equivalent temperature as well. Look at all this big cold pool. Dew points as well, freezing cold dew points. And of course the two meter temperatures will be taking a plummet as well. Much of Europe here below freezing overnight. And this is coming towards the end of March. So it would be quite an unseasonable late cold snap it's not unusual to see this in the early portion of march but march very much is a transition month from the possibility of proper winter conditions to the possibility of some early summer or late spring warmth that we could start to see potentially in april so march very much a transition month and it would be really unusual uh, and it would be quite a shock to the system if this sort of pattern did come off towards the end of march now, if we do go over to the GM, see how that does compare. I must say, it's not quite the same. You can see westy winds continue to push in over the coming days. As we progress towards the end of the run, there is a bit of a blocking signal appearing, maybe still trying to push in northeastly or easterly winds, and there is a cold pool associated with this. It is going much chillier, but it's nowhere near as blocked and nowhere near as absolutely frigid as the GFS is. Uh, GFS would be probably more sustained, but this is very much would be a transient pattern. But interestingly, both runs showing something quite a bit colder uh, and potentially pushing us back towards some, something that we would be more inclined to see in winter. Again, a big cold pool exiting out of the Arctic. Again, all I can see from this is this is disruption of the tributary polar vortex caused by that sudden stratospheric warming. So I do think there is quite a plausible option that this happens just depends on how it happens where that cold air goes and how sustained any block would be now if you look at the latest ecmwf again similar story westy winds pushing in over the coming days higher pressure trying to build northwards but not having too much success there's some brief height rises here and potentially some northerly winds appearing some amplification of the jet stream so similar in terms of a cold pool getting pushed pushed out of the arctic you see that with the temperature deviation um which unfortunately hasn't loaded um but you can see it's very cold air mass coming our way but you can see the westy winds are fairly strong if we look at those uh, 300 hp winds the westy winds are fairly strong so wouldn't really be sustained at all
And if you finish by looking at the latest ensemble, which you can see very cold conditions are not favoured at this stage, but is a potential scenario. You can see over the coming weeks generally around average, at times above average, at times below average, but generally nothing too out of the ordinary. Precipitation still looks reasonably high. UKV definitely picking up the precipitation for the early part of the week, whereas the GFS ensemble is not so much, which is interesting. But definitely longer range, there are some cold runs appearing, including the GFS operational run. Really just a pattern to keep a very close eye on. Dew points as well, going lower in the longer term, again suggestive of colder, drier air masses potentially moving in. And if we do finally compare it to the ECM WF, a similar trend, generally around average or actually slightly above average over the next week or so. And then as we head into the latter part of March, quite a few more colder runs appearing. Now this could just be a trend we see today and maybe over another couple of days. We really need to see this get into the 10 day time frame before we can say um, this with any sort of, uh, say this has got any sort of real plausibility. It's definitely a plausible pattern for whether it's actually gonna happen. We'll have to wait until we're near at the time. I do think we will just have to wait and see the next week or so from a lot milder. Early spring in terms of, or mid spring sort of temperatures wise, but seeing lots of precipitation still. And of course, the risk of frosts or even wintry conditions returning in March. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.